Okay, good morning. Thank you for joining us today. Nearly a year ago, on September 6, 2011, I appointed the members of the new Governor's Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math Advisory Council. This public-private partnership was established by Executive Order Number 74. Its overreaching goal is boosting student interest and achievement in STEM subjects and promoting STEM economic development. Today, the Council's co-chairs, Lieutenant Governor Reynolds and the University of Northern Iowa President Ben Allen, will update you on the progress made by the Governor's STEM Advisory Council and announce a series of STEM community conversations scheduled across the state in September and October. First, however, I want to say how impressed I am with the work of this council, whose 40 members represent education, business, industry, nonprofits, the legislature, state agencies, and national STEM organizations. The council's top priority in its first year has been delivering, delivering high quality STEM education to students all over the state, and they are well on their way to doing just that. That's a credit to the leadership and hard work of the Council, its Executive Director Jeff Weld, and a generous $4.7 million appropriation made by the Iowa General Assembly. It's critical that all students have access to high-quality STEM education because they need to be prepared for the demands of the global workforce, of the global workforce. STEM jobs are projected to be among the fastest growing and best paying. Students should be able to take engaging STEM classes and participate in after school and summer STEM programs so the door is open to pursue a STEM career someday if that's where their interests lie. Iowa's economy will also benefit if more young people are ready for STEM jobs. Employers routinely tell us they have difficulty filling STEM jobs that pay well because applicants lack the right skill set. With that, I'll turn the podium over to the University of Northern Iowa President Ben Allen to talk more about what the Council has accomplished this first year. Thank you, Governor Brassman. Good morning. I also want to thank the Governor and Lieutenant Governor for their vision for the importance of STEM education to the state of Iowa. As noted by the Governor, much has been accomplished this past year by the engaged members of the STEM Advisory Council, the leadership of Jeff Wells, and the bipartisan support of the General Assembly. The Council, which is very strong, informed, dedicated members, has met on several occasions as a whole this past year, and the Executive Committee members of that group have met on numerous occasions. But the group has done more than just meet. I will highlight several of the actions taken by the Council. First, for the first time in Iowa, as a result of the work of the Council, we now have six regional STEM hubs in place to ensure that all students in areas of the state are provided access to STEM's best practices and most advanced thinking. These six regional hubs, each having a manager with well-defined responsibilities, are working as a network with pre-K through 12 schools businesses, nonprofits, community colleges and universities, and other entities. To support these six regional hubs and their programming, we have for each a STEM advisory board with members appointed by the governor and comprised of educators and business and nonprofit leaders. Second, we have identified 12 outstanding STEM programs that can be scaled up and implemented to, for our pre-K through 12 students and teachers, both in-class and after-school programs are included. These programs selected for application across the state of Iowa were competitively selected and have been proven to increase student interest and achievement in STEM. We wanted the state funding to be focused on programming delivered throughout the state and to be focused on programs that have demonstrated success. More than $3 million have been allocated to the implementation of these 12 STEM programs. Local educators will formal in program have the opportunity to apply for and implement one of these 12 STEM programs that is best suited for their students. During this past year, we have also supported other successful programs, including the Real World Externship Program, a great program that brings teachers into businesses during the summer 
so that they can learn about those individual businesses and take that back to the classroom and applying those principles of math and science and engineering to those real world situations. It helps us teachers, teachers, and more importantly, the students. Throughout the year, we have emphasized the need to have a public private partnership approach to addressing the STEM challenge. The actions taken today reflect that emphasis. We've also defined indicators by which to measure our STEM progress. We are well aware of the importance of accountability. Finally, we developed working groups that provide a draft recommendations for the council to consider. I will turn the podium over to Lieutenant Governor Reynolds who will provide more information about those recommendations and about the upcoming STEM community conversation. Well, good morning and thank you, President Allen. It's been my privilege to serve as the co-chair for the Governor's STEM Advisory Council and with the Council's 38 other members. This is an incredibly hard-working, committed group of individuals that are creating STEM opportunities for students and companies in every region of the state. The initiative is about increasing innovation and productivity and growth, which will enhance Iowans' quality of life. As Governor Branstead noted, the council has been operating nearly a year now, and starting on September 11th in Tama County, we'll launch a series of STEM community conversations these will be hour-long public meetings that we hope to have attended by parents and grandparents and educators, civic leaders, legislators, and other Iowans. Governor Branstad and uh, President Allen will join me as their schedules permit to talk about what the Governor's STEM Advisory Council has accomplished and to seek Iowans' feedbacks on future priorities on how to best continue to build and strengthen STEM in Iowa. Council work groups have made uh, six recommendations about those, what those priorities should be, and those recommendations are as follows. Number one, establish a STEM professional development center to provide vision and leadership. Its work will include focusing on blended learning, utilizing interactive technologies, and expanding the pool of professional development providers to include private sector professionals. Number two, improve STEM teacher training licensure and retention. And this would include creating rigorous alternative pathways to the classroom for STEM professionals and creating a STEM endorsement for secondary and a STEM emphasis for elementary. Number three, to build a web portal to store best practices, a best practices clearinghouse with a comprehensive searchable database of curriculum, demonstrations, partnerships and directories of resources that are local, regional, national, and international. It would also offer an online repository of, an, of all educational assets and professionals within Iowa. Number four, establish regional STEM-focused schools. And number five, increase public awareness of the importance of STEM by launching a campaign to include multimedia messaging that will be focused on STEM careers. And number six, incentivize Iowa businesses to commit workforce, facilities, and other resources such as equipment to STEM education, and in turn, promote the Iowa workforce development, skilled Iowa initiative through schools, through colleges, and informal educational facilities. Feedback from Iowans on these recommendations and other suggestions will help us set priorities as we move forward with the STEM initiative. We plan to hold 14 STEM community conversations around the state and hope to hold more of them as time permits. The full schedule is not only on the governor's website, my website, as well as the Iowa STEM website. We are determined to provide Iowa's young people with engaging STEM education opportunities no matter where they live. That will help assure more students are better prepared to be knowledgeable students and to someday head off to, a, to college or to a career prepared for success. It will also help assure a stronger STEM employee pipeline for business and industry. A world-class education and a world-class workforce go hand in hand in STEM as well as other subjects. So with that, we'd be happy to take your questions. President Allen, would you talk about, you say you've come up with indicators to gauge the success of the program, what are those? Uh, some of the uh, indicators uh, are uh, deals with the interest level of students, how many people are deciding to take science and math courses in high school, how many are deciding to major in that area of college. We also will be looking at, uh, obviously over time, the achievement on math and science 
the scores will be monitored because we both want interest increased and achievement increased. But also I think it's a matter of just how many more people across the state are engaged, and that will be more difficult to measure, but we need to have the parents, we need to have the business leaders, we need to have everyone engaged. But we have about seven eight that we can look at the most interesting achievement uh, indicators. Lieutenant Governor, you said that these meetings are to find feedback. Uh, but it seems like you've already decided on what the, the points are. Can you help elaborate on that? <laughs> or are these going to change based on these meetings? Or well, yeah, that's why we're out here. It's kind of like we did with the educational blueprint. The council has been working on this. We've had work groups that have been working over the past year. And these are some of the recommendations that they've come up with after spending a lot of time doing research and evaluation, talking to educators as well as business leaders across the state of Iowa. But sometimes people, you know, STEM takes on a connotation where it doesn't apply to everybody. We want to dispel that. We want to make sure that kids, no matter where they live, know that a STEM literacy and STEM education applies to almost everything that they do. And so part of the dialogue is to have parents and grandparents participate in the conversation so we can talk about the importance of STEM and how they think it will impact their child's life, their grandchildren's life, and to have business there so they can talk about the, important, the importance of having a skilled work group available to meet their needs uh, as they hopefully grow their business and expand and as new businesses tend to or start to locate in Iowa, we want to make sure that we have a skilled workforce ready to meet those needs. So we're out talking about what they think is important but also listening to what um, Iowans feel is important too and see if they agree with that. Other questions on this? I've just really been impressed with the, the strong bipartisan support that STEM has received in the General Assembly and also across the state. So I, I think this is a program that people recognize and really focused on the future, focused on really quality, good paying jobs for the future, and getting Iowa's young people prepared to compete and achieve in those critically important areas. Any other questions? We'd be glad to respond to questions on other subjects as well. Uh, Governor, uh, Paul Ryan is uh, in Iowa, I think, today and tomorrow. Uh, he's received some criticism for his convention speech uh, being maybe shading the truth in terms of the James Bond GM plan. Uh, so many things. Uh, what do you think about his speech, and do you have any advice on him for him to do this year? Well, first of all, I thought he did a phenomenal job. I think he's a very courageous guy. He's been willing to put together, he's the only one I know of in the Congress, to put together a comprehensive plan to address the biggest problem facing America, and that is this massive increase in the national debt, which has gone up more than a trillion dollars a year every year that Obama has been president. Forty cents of every dollar we're spending today, federal money, is borrowed money. Now, anybody with common sense knows that cannot be sustained, and we will be worse off than the European countries like Greece and Spain and Portugal if we continue this for four more years. So I respect and appreciate his courage in addressing that. I also thought he did a great job. I was on the floor of the convention for his speech. Um, he pointed out that he comes from a very humble background, Janesville, Wisconsin. It's not too far from Dubuque. His father graduated from uh, Loris College, but his father died when he was 16. He's a guy that's uh, worked hard his whole life, and uh, I think that he did a phenomenal job of pointing out that the Obama administration promised to keep the unemployment rate below 8%, but it's not been below 8% for 40-some months, and indeed we've spent all this money on this massive stimulus that hasn't worked, but has saddled us with this massive debt we've got to pay. And frankly, the Federal Reserve has kept interest rates at a rock bottom, which means elderly people on fixed incomes who are basically relying on their savings get virtually no return on their investment. It's robbing them of the income that they should have. At the same time, we are facing this uh, situation of this massive tax increase at the end of the year under this administration which is always advocating for more taxes and more regulations, the very thing that's causing a lot of business decision makers not to invest. So I think that uh, uh, there's a very clear contrast here, and I think his youthful enthusiasm 
plus the experience he has of 14 years in Congress and having uh, led the effort to put together a bipartisan plan to address the massive deficits uh, makes him a very strong asset. And I will be there today at Kirkwood Community College to introduce uh, Congressman Ryan. I'm very pleased that uh, he's coming back to Iowa again, and I hope that he will come back often. No concerns about the speech? Uh, no, not at all. I mean, uh, I understand, that, you know, what, what I find really interesting is uh, the projections that this administration has made on the budget have been so far off, and nobody seems to want to talk about that. I, the truth of the matter is that people of, that, that have genuine knowledge and interest in the national economy have got to be scared to death about the continue. And there seems to be just no interest on in this administration addressing the biggest problem facing America, and that is this massive debt that keeps increasing when you're spending 40 cents of every dollar being borrowed money. And Obamacare is just another example of that. When that kicks in in 2014, you know, um, there's just no way that we're going to be able to uh, sustain or afford it. And I think that uh, uh, it's important that those issues be addressed. Other questions? Lieutenant Governor, uh, just a quick question. I was watching on TV uh, the convention when you were uh, up there, and it, you seemed a little uncomfortable when all these votes were coming in for Ron Paul. Could you tell me? Uh, oh, not at all. I thought I was smiling graciously out there. Uh, my communication director said, be sure and enunciate the number of votes. So I was very careful to say the state and to very clearly say whatever the delegate count was. So if you miss my smile, I'm sorry. From the photos I've seen, I'm smiling in every one of them. So I was absolutely comfortable with the role, and I was very honored to be able to represent Iowa next. My first convention, I had a great time and really, really enjoyed it. So It was my eighth convention, but yeah. I would say the Lieutenant Governor did a great job. <laughs> I was really proud of her, and, and I thought she represented Iowa very well. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much.